We're going to start today with our song, and then we'll ask Pastor Stevens to pray us in, and then we'll be ready to go. Amen.
Thank you, Pastor Stevens. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> We're going to talk about all you need with, with the Lord today. Um, and I'm going to talk about one of the things you definitely need to go to Him in regards to. Um, if you know anything about a yoke, in order for it to truly work it has to be put on something that is doing the same work and going in the same direction and if one is smaller than the other then they struggle because the larger will be pulling more doing more and carrying more and if the yoke does not fit hmm then the yoke will be awkward and heavy and no work will be able to get done. <clears throat> the reason that we struggle in this world today is because we carry the yoke of the world and not the yoke of Christ. We will stay in the yoke of the world from something as simple as getting out of bad relationships and when we are delivered we go right back to another one yes, sir. to stand under false teaching because that's where mama went to church at that's where daddy went to church at and just some food for thought Christ is bigger than all of us so why not let him carry more of the yoke? 
Now I got to tell you, the burdens will come your way all the time. The situations will keep coming your way all the time. And at times you will fall from the weight. But I have an offer for you today. If you go to Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30, you will hear something that reads as follows. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. See, if I was to title this, I would call it, Come Get Your Yoke and This Ain't Eggs. Come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. See, we try to take on these situations in this world and we get ran over. We get put down, we get discouraged, and then we get ready to lash out. But the offer that comes to you today simply states, Come to me. And isn't this the same thing that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 8 and 22 about let the dead bury the dead? This is another follow me or come to me command by Jesus. And remember, as he walked even in chapter 8 along in the midst of all the problems, and not only walking through them, but healing them all, and all that he stated was, Come to me. Come on, preach up. I'm See, I'm this this is just start of the invitation from Christ. No matter what may be going on in your life, you have to come to Christ first. Come on, preach up. If you stand on the outside and try to handle this problem on your own, it's going to get heavier. And he said his burden was light. If you stand on the outside and try to face this problem on your own, the yoke ain't going to fit. All Christ simply says here is, come to me. He starts it off. He says, come to me. Not to a man, not to a woman. Not to your girlfriend, not to your boyfriend, not to your husband, not to your wife, but come to me. Come on, preach up. And please don't let me forget not to leave out, not to the clergy. Uh -huh. He said, come to me. I know you want all your problems solved. We all do. I know you want to be better. We all want to be. I pray and hope. And I know that you want things to go your way for a change, but first, you got to come to Christ. See, he knows that you are weary and burdened because this world is set up for you to be that way. I got you. I got you. you get attacked daily. You get attacked for your skin color. You get attacked for your status in monetary amounts. You get attacked for your education. You get ta attacked if you just say Christ's name out loud in a crowd. And that's just from the outside world. Don't forget the self-inflicted wounds that you put on yourself when you accept things that you know you shouldn't accept from others. When you let people do things to you that you know they shouldn't do. And when you cause your own self-doubt. But he tells you in 1 Peter 5 and 8, Be alert and sober of mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a lion that's roaring, looking for someone to devour. 
See, you don't need to put these extra burdens on yourself because Satan is already looking to do it. See, this, this world makes you weary and burdened because you take the pleasure of the world. And it does not have anyone that you can cast your cares on. See, when you're stuck in this world, there is nobody that you can cast your problems on. Because it already tells you the king of this world is out for destruction of you. See, the world has no salvation for you. It has no redeeming power and no eternal life for you. So you become yoked with the weight of the world, which is the destruction of the flesh by appealing to it to be yoked with the ways of the world. See, the world joke says, do like I do. I don't mind if you hate each other. I don't mind if you want to kill someone. I don't mind if you are a racist and if I touch a little more sensitivity. I don't care if you pray in doubt. If you use the pulpit to make wealth or if you preach false doctrines and man's traditions. I don't care if you shoot up a young man 47 times that didn't have a gun on him. See, that, that is the yoke of the world. And even being yoked with the world, you still go catch a case of problems. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But you don't have anyone that you can give them to when you're with the world. Let me, let me put it to you this way. You can be weary and burdened and don't be fooled by the so-called teachers and preachers because they'll put a heavy burden on you for personal gain and won't do a thing themselves. They will tell you everything from I heard a word from the Lord and he told me I've been given the task to lead you to the Lord and I'm waiting for another one to heal the world from COVID. If y'all ain't paying attention to what was said in the world last year. And as a matter of fact, I might as well throw out monkeypox now because I'm waiting for this man to say the Lord told me to heal monkeypox and put his hand out to the TV screen. And then they end. And, and this is this is when you really should be paying attention. And then they end this blasphemy, this false teaching. And they end it with the Lord has told me I should be the first billionaire televangelist. Ain't nothing man can do. If God ain't doing it, man can't do it. Matthew 23, 4 through 7 reads as follows. This is man. They tie up heavy, cumbersome loads and put them on other people's shoulders. But they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Everything they do is done for people to see. They make their phylacteries wide and tassels on their garments long. In other words, he's saying they dress the part, but they heart ain't the part. They love the place of honor at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogues. Uh, in another way, he's saying they need to be noticed, seen, and let their arrogance and pride be noticed by everybody. And y'all placed them in that spot. They love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi by others. First of all, there ain't but one true teacher. We just sharers of the word. So understand, conceit and arrogance have put them in places that they should not be in. They put these loads on you. Because you don't read the word. You don't go to the one that will show you the word. And you keep taking your problems and burdens to the ones that can't offload your burdens and problems. See, this continues and will continue to keep happening because you go to man who can only add to your burdens. Because best believe we're going to tell somebody about your situation. Best believe if it ain't something in it for us, we ain't going to do it. So you go to him instead of going to Jesus who can lift your burden and it continues to be that way. Or you can come to Jesus and watch what he can do.
that the world will never do for you because the world has never and never will go to the cross for anyone. See, I, I can tell you about this personally because I experienced it. My mother had cancer and my brother had called me down in Baltimore while I was at work and he was going off on me and my brother is terrified of me so to think that he would even raise his voice would shock you. And he was going through it. And I had already spoken to the doctor, but I had told my brother that I didn't need to come up there. One, because he was there with my cousin. But two, I had already taken it to the Lord. I didn't want my mom to be gone. That burden was heavy on me. I was at home crying and praying. But the Lord said, you ain't ready. It ain't her time because of you. My mom is here today, almost 15 years later. See, I, I can tell you what that burden is. I can, I can take you to my youngest son, who was born a pound and eight ounces at 26 and a half weeks. And the doctors told me he wasn't going to make it. His lungs weren't developed. He was going to pass in the next few days. And I'm crying because I'm like, Lord, I can afford this. I can do this. I can handle this. But I'm steadily listening to man tell me about the burden of life. Man ain't even got a life to give. So I sat there in my, my tears and my frustrations. And then some said, give it to Jesus. And, and I kind of straightened up a little bit more and I started praying. And it said, give it to Jesus. And I, I straightened up a little bit more and I... My tears went away and they said, give it to Jesus. And the next thing I know, I'm watching a child come in there who was nine ounces in the NIC unit. She was smaller than my child was. And she made it through. But if I would have listened to man and kept that problem on me, I would have had a problem. But when I gave it to Jesus, I, he said, let me do me. Get out the way. He told me, move, Jeffrey. I don't care about your finances. I don't care about your health and what you got. This is a spiritual thing. Stop listening to man and let me be God for you. And my son now is a junior in college. I can tell you about the Lord delivering. See, I can, I can walk through it. My mother wasn't supposed to be here by man's standards, but we went on God's standards. My son wasn't supposed to make it two weeks by man's standards, but we went by God's standards. And to this day, they are both here. And, and I got to stay in God's standards. We got to get in God's standards. We keep going to man. Man will say one thing. And he'll add to my burden. But the Lord said, come to me first. Why would the created go to the created instead of going to the creator? Why do you continue to struggle? Because you go to the one that can't do what the son can do. See, when Jesus says come, there is no worldly junk with it. And it is not of this world. But I'll protect you in the world. He will. He protected my heart with my mother. He protected my heart with my son. And my emotions were everywhere. And the Lord said, I'm going to get you back intact, Jeffrey. And he put me back together. Now, now you learn, you learn in this world what the world got to offer you. And the world always goes against God. The world does not want you to come to God. It even tells you about your flesh in, act, in Galatians 5, 19 and 21. It says the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual morality goes against God. Impurity goes against God. 
and debauchery goes against God. Idolatry and witchcraft goes against God. Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition goes against God. Dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like go against God. And at the end of that verse, he says, I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Stop going to the flesh. Come to Jesus. See, all those things speak to destruction of the flesh that will lead you to eternal damnation. And see, Jesus makes this offer, and this is a simple offer. Come to me. He wants to teach you his ways. He wants to take some of your burdens off of you. And Jesus doesn't say, here's a yoke and go out there and make it on your own like the world does. Jesus wants to teach you how to carry this yoke. And what may seem heavy can be lighter when you know how to carry it. And have the tools to carry it. If you look at Philippians 4 and 19. And a lot of people sometimes take this verse to mean money. But it says, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. If you don't get anything out of this verse, know that it speaks to your spiritual gain. The best thing. The most important thing that you can get from the Lord is the Holy Spirit and the acceptance of Christ. And then walk like him. So here go the tools because he's going to give them to you. And how will you teach me to use them, Lord? How can I use the tools? Because you know Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. And look what he says in John 14, 16, and 18. Because he tells you, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. Uh-oh. Somebody to help you with them tools. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him if you come to Jesus. For he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. See, the world has orphaned you. The world is going to let you do what you want to do as long as it goes against Jesus. And the world can't wait for you to fall. But the Lord will keep you. He will let you rest. He'll let you get strength and teach you. And look at what he says. He'll teach you how to do this. But are you willing to be taught? Because his teaching starts with being gentle and having a humble heart. So, do you have a gentle and humble heart? Can you be submissive to the Lord? Can you... Work in his will instead of trying to work in your will. Or like I like to say, is it Yahweh or your way? Some of us that have been in the church for years are still doing it our way instead of the Lord's way. Can you stop trying to be like the Joneses and be like the disciples? Can you stop trying to please the world with being fake and please the Lord with faith? Are you willing to love the Lord above all? Because these are a part of his teachings. And that means from worldly material, education, traditions, and sometimes even the family and friends that you can see. You can't get taught if you don't open your heart and mind to being taught. You can't get taught if you don't open that Bible that you got sitting in the house and it looks good, but when you open it up, it kicks out more dust than the vacuum cleaner does. See, I, I, I know what Jesus can do for us. 
And what Jesus is saying is, my nature is not the nature of the world, or my way is not the way of the world. I know that you look for the powerful king to come and take over the world, to be wealthy and doing whatever I wanted, but my yoke is not that way. My yoke is humble and gentle in heart. The same heart that the world can produce sin in is the same heart that Jesus can produce gentleness and humbleness in if you open it up to him. This is my nature, and if you want your yoke to be easy and light, then you have to take on my nature. Black people went nuts when Tiger Woods started playing golf and went to the golf course in droves and took on the nature of Tiger Rose. We was buying golf clubs, getting golf balls, and riding all over to play. Ain't never played in our life. Michael Jordan, when he got to basketball, we were the same way. Be like Mike. Bo Jackson in football, everybody was like Bo Nose and Bruce Lee in martial arts. But did you go crazy over the humbleness of Jesus Christ? Did you go crazy over the love that went to the cross? Did you go crazy over the suffering that he took with his innocent blood? See, see, I haven't seen a commercial that, that sings about being like Jesus. And I can even look in the pulpits and they don't say be like Jesus because they are too busy trying to get to glory for themselves. The world did not see me as they should have because they didn't want this yoke. Guilty was considered innocent. Truth was considered a lie. Poor was punished by the rich when the rich were tipping the scales in their favor and the meek were being ran over and thought of as weak. When a true strength comes in your humility. Doesn't that sound like the old biblical days? And the present biblical days? Why don't you come to his yoke? It is the simple fact that Jesus, the all-powerful, had a servant's heart and it was on display at all times. And if that is the case, then he is the only one qualified to bear all of our burdens. See, I, wanna, I want to see you wearing a shirt that says, I have a servant's heart. I like Mike. I love the Lord. Mike may make a winning shot, tiger a putt, and bow a touchdown. But none of them can save a soul. Not any of us. See, that yoke is light compared to the others and that don't follow Jesus. It's easy when you keep the faith. And even if you add additional burdens, you can take them to the Lord. Then you get a gift that the world will never give you. Rest. Something that is being offered for your soul is rest that the Lord provides. God made this claim back in Jeremiah 6, but now Jesus, the vessel of salvation, says what his father says and backs it up with the way he lived, the crucifixion, the resurrection, and eternal glory. This is your reward for taking on this yoke, his nature, his ways, and staying faithful. A promise from the father and then from the son. So when we go to verse 30, he says it to us real easy. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. See, when we spoke of the orphan in the world, well, when you have Jesus, you're not orphaned. We are family. We are brothers and sisters. We are co-heirs of the kingdom. And he can show us how to carry these burdens because he is there with us. And most of the time... If you give them to him, he is carrying them. If you give them to him. See, when you can laugh when you're going through something, Jesus. When you can cry because you made it through something, deliverance, Jesus. And if you go through the same thing again and again and again, and it is much easier 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And don't forget all the good times and thank him for that also. Because that is Jesus. The one thing that you have to realize in closing is that it didn't say that your burdens would be gone. I don't want you to think that your burdens disappeared. This ain't no magic show. It didn't say that you wouldn't have to lift up something. You got some work. We got some weights on us. And that everything was going to be easy peasy. You know that song. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Well, well, he didn't. But if your burdens are too heavy and the yoke is too strong, then increase your discipleship to the Lord because you aren't letting him carry them. And you know that gentle and humble heart? Increase that too. Because that might be part of the problem. His burden was stated to be light and easy. Then give it to the one who died for all sin and was innocent of all sin. Because what burden can be heavier than that? Uh -huh. And he made it through it and is seated at the right hand of the Father, working for us continually. Amen. Amen. Hey, great word. Awesome. Amen. Somebody say my whole name. <laughs> you took that check from your granddad. <laughs> 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 I it's 50th anniversary, and you should have remembered that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when he, somebody asked him how, how did he and him as somebody of faith married so long, and he that's what he used to ask for you that scripture, the yoke. Yep. Amen. You ready? To... <laughs> you sure brought that back to me. <laughs> oh, man. Anybody else? Did we miss anybody? Great, great word. Great word. Thank you, sister. I enjoyed it. I had a hard time getting 
getting on, but thanks to the Payne family, they got me in, <laughs> and I really enjoyed it. Amen. I'm glad you got on. <laughs> That was the book of Matthew 11, verses uh, 28 through 30. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I can send you the I send you the sermon if you want me to, Mom. Okay. She needs even to say it. <laughs> 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 hey. I heard it. I know what's going on. <laughs> um, before I let Pastor Tim pray us out, you know, I thank God for my my mom being here. You know, I, I thank God for my son being here. But you know, I thank God more for delivering everybody through their burdens. If you go to Him, I'm not the only one that He delivered through something. And I'm not the only one that could testify about his deliverance. We all got something to say. If you made it through last night, all right. you can talk about his deliverance. If you can hear this word today, you got some deliverance. If you get a chance, tell somebody about him delivering you. Because you had a burden on you in yesterday that didn't carry through into today. God keeps delivering us if we just go to him. And and don't be impatient because, man, I get impatient sometimes myself. I want a situation to go the way I want it to go, and it doesn't go that way right away. I'd be like, Lord, what's holding you up? <laughs> and the thing that's holding them up is me because my patience ain't on display. He tells us to be patient and endure. So... I have to remember to sit back and do his will. And his will is to tell me to be patient and endure. It will happen. Whatever it may be, it will happen. But you got to let the Lord be the Lord. Amen. So, so remember that when we, when we go into this week, when we go into this world, when we get off of this phone, when we talk to somebody, tell them how good God is at deliverance. You, you can speak from the cross, you can speak from the garden, you can speak from Egypt, you can speak from the slavery of sin. And then he even has a place for you. He has always been a deliverer and our burdens are never too heavy for him. Tell him to give it to him. Pray. Pray some more. Get on the knees a little more. Squat down. If you can't squat, sit. But pray, because he hears your prayers, he's attentive to your prayers, and he answers prayers. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Pastor Tim, you want to pray us out, brother? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. yeah. Don't forget to come back tonight at 6 o'clock, where Pastor Marvin Pittman is going to be our speaker for tonight. So y'all come on back at 6 o'clock. We'll be looking forward. We'll be glad to have you. Hey, man. Then we're going to be coming this day. Thank you, Lord, for the word.
Lord, our God, Lord, the pains, Father God, Lord, we just want to, the, the, the pain, we just want to lift up up to you, Father God. Lord, for there's a, 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 a whatever that they need, our Father God, our Lord, we ask you to just answer in the name of Jesus, Father God. Lord, we ask you, Lord, for where we continue to go forward, Father God, and for these and man's blessings, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.